You just learned that your country has been infected with the H5N1 avian influenza virus. How the virus entered your country is yet to be determined. It could have come across a border, or it could have been brought in by way of migrating wild birds. You know that it spreads fast and is highly contagious amongst poultry. You know the risks that it could infect and kill a person, and the slight risk that this virus could become highly contagious between people, becoming a deadly pandemic. You have to act quickly. A standard quick response is to kill birds, sick and healthy, within a certain radius of the outbreak, and impose strict movement controls and standards to disinfect the area before restocking. But you wonder at what cost? What radius is optimal? In a country where 30 to 50% of rural and semi-urban households keep poultry in their backyard, how can you know that everyone will comply? And once the disease is no longer contained, once you have more cases and it becomes endemic, does culling still make sense? Would education or vaccination or some other measure be more cost effective? While mass culling or even mass vaccination may be the best way to stop the spread of a potential pandemic in developed countries, the problem and therefore the solution is different in parts of the world that have high levels of poverty. For developing countries, we have learned that a nuanced, risk-based approach is the simplest, most economical, and most effective way of eradicating the H5N1 avian flu virus. The following outlines how you can achieve this approach. First, you analyze your problem by assessing the risks of the disease spreading. How is it spreading? Why and where? Second, you identify and evaluate your options based on that analysis. And third, through partnerships with local people and institutions, you identify and implement a range of targeted options based on the results of your analysis. First, evaluate potential pathways for entry and spread of the H5N1 strain of highly pathogenic avian influenza. Avian flu starts with wild birds who come by the virus as naturally as humans come by the common cold. The virus is spread through the bird's secretions directly between birds or carried over longer distances on inanimate objects such as clothing, shoes, or cages. The spread of the virus is affected by the nature of poultry farming and marketing. Which management practices are necessary to reduce the risk of poultry diseases? Poultry farming takes place at many different scales. On one end are households keeping a half dozen or more chickens in their backyard for home use. And at the other end are large-scale industrial operations with thousands of chickens providing meat or eggs to the commercial sector. And somewhere in between are smaller commercial operations. While a backyard producer in a rural area may only have a few points of potential contact with other birds, such as a neighbor or a visiting relative, a commercial producer will have many points of contact, slaughterhouses, transportation systems, markets, and so on throughout the production chain. These points of potential contact, in addition to varying management practices, determine the potential exposure to poultry diseases. We must also consider how willing people will be to enact proposed eradication solutions. This is their economic risk. A large commercial producer may be willing to enact eradication options with little incentive, as the returns to their investment will be large, so their economic risk is relatively low. A small-scale producer with low income and little knowledge or incentive may choose not to change their existing production practices as their economic risk is relatively high. To encourage these small-scale operators to change their practices, they will need alternative incentives. Understanding risks and disease pathways and what influences behaviors allows evaluation of the options and the potential cost of each for ridding your country of the H5N1 avian flu. The main options for eradication include large-scale culling, vaccinating non-infected chickens, implementing biosecurity measures, and movement controls. Surveillance, 
and educating farmers and the general public on proper handling of poultry. Based on your current exposure risk and as you move between the scales of production, it is possible that incentives to alter management practices will change, as will the cost of implementing risk reduction measures. For example, building an enclosed poultry house may be fairly costly compared to requiring foot baths and building coops with soft mesh walls. Our risk analysis tools show the general cost to governments, citizens, or businesses when enacting each option. The tools enable evaluation of different factors affecting behavioral change and the feasibility of different options for each challenging scenario. Having identified the different options, the next step is implementing them. Success will depend on adopting a range of options best suited to different situations and creating partnerships among all the actors, farmers, veterinarians, field agents, and local organizations and populations. Success will also depend on having the money to implement. A focused response based on levels of risk and local realities will save money and improve effectiveness in containing and, in time, eradicating the disease.